Hello. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Michael. I used to be the technician at Freddy's and was the one who contacted the owners of Fazbear's Fright after the place burned down. Trust me, the equipment you're using right now is much more stable and much less likely to catch fire. Probably. Anyways, the building that you're currently in is a Fazbear storage building. Basically, when a character was scrapped, it was sent here to be used for parts, assuming its parts were still usable. That's why all the animatronics we found in the building were partially dismantled. I'm still working on repairing them, so not all of them are working yet. I'll keep working on them as the week goes on. Now, we're unsure whether or not this will be the final building that the horror attraction takes place in, but while we're still searching for a new location, we need you to keep an eye on these robots. So, I'll allow to give you a rundown of what to expect. As you saw last time, the animatronics tend to wander. Fazbear Entertainment was aware of this, so a security system was already installed. You have a security surveillance tablet, just like last time, except this one isn't mounted to the wall. You can use this to monitor the security cameras mounted throughout the building. If the cameras turn to static, don't worry, they'll be online again shortly. The next thing you should know about is what to do when Freddy and his friends get a little bit too close for comfort. To your right, you have a second tablet that allows you to activate and deactivate three heaters, one for each entrance to the room you're in. If somebody is, let's say, on your right, turn on the right heater. The animatronics are programmed to avoid temperatures hot enough to cause them to overheat and will leave. Once they leave, you can turn the heater off again. Simple enough. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, why can't I leave the heaters on the whole time? There's two reasons. One, your room would become uncomfortably hot and your legs would start sticking to your chair. Two, Mangle. Mangle is that pink and white fox that you can see in the back room with the other characters. Now, Mangle was originally in a room called the Kid's Cove, which is where all the toddlers would be. To help keep track of them, Mangle was given thermal imaging. I know this because, well, I was the one who originally installed it. Now, that creates a problem since heat is your main method of defense. If you leave the heaters on for too long, Mangle will start crawling through the air vent connected to your office. You don't want that so use the heater sparingly. The last thing I need to go over is the animatronic from the last location, Spring Bonnie. It survived the fire, most of it at least, so it's in the building with you now. The problem is, since this animatronic is much older than the others, its programming isn't as advanced. This means that you can use the heater all you want, but it won't work on him. To compensate for this, we've installed a button that lets you administer a controlled shock into whatever room you choose. It's too weak to affect the others, but it should work on him. So. To recap, use the heaters if somebody comes near, don't use them long enough for Mangle to start moving, and shock Spring Bonnie to get him to stay away. I think that's everything. See you tomorrow.
Hello again. Now, I'm going to keep things brief today since you will not only have to worry about more animatronics as I repair them, but the animatronics that were already active are starting to become more active as well, so keep on your toes. The main reason I'm leaving this message is to inform you that we're working on finding another animatronic that I don't particularly like that much. All models of it were supposed to be destroyed, but your friend is more than eager to track one down, and since I'm part of this now, might as well help him. It's for the sake of the attraction, you know? Alright, I guess I should let you get back to your job. Have a good night.
Alright, so, you know how I said a few nights ago we were looking for a supposedly lost animatronic? Well, we may have found one, maybe even the original model. All models of it were supposedly destroyed for being too dangerous for kids to be around. I've seen the damage it can cause firsthand. I'm, I'm getting off topic. So, we're going to take a look at the original location, see if it's still there. I'll give you an update tomorrow. Have a good night.
We've found one. Yep. It's heavily damaged. It reeks of old pizza, and it's questionably stained, but it was there. Now, I know that this was supposed to be our last day, but could you stay one more night? We'll be dropping off the animatronic at the building tomorrow, and we'll need you to watch it. We haven't tested if it works yet. For all we know, it could explode. Also, have the animatronics in the building been acting weird lately? It's probably just me, but they seem to just stare. It, it might just be about their system, I'm not sure. I might have seen this before. I, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, though. Alright, tomorrow will be your last day. I'll talk to you then.
Okay, dude, so I was dropping off the animatronic, right? And it just went ballistic. I don't know why or what or... Look, I know you won't get this message until your shift starts. Just complete your shift. I trust you. You can do this. Complete your shift and get out.
Dude, you there? Come on, man, this isn't funny. Dude! Oh, Lord, no. Withered BB was a character that was scrapped pretty early in development and ended up being replaced by Phantom BB. BB was a character that we really never saw the end of, just like with the toys, and that's what I wanted to do with this game. I wanted to finish the stories of the souls that were still trapped and the characters that we never really saw the end of. So, Withered BB never got anywhere past the concept phase. No models were ever made for him, nor was any programming made for him. What he would have done is he would have crawled out of the box in Camp 5, which if you look closely you can see has his head in it. He would have crawled out of the box, he would have entered from the left side of your office, and if you don't make him go away with the heaters, he would have disabled them. Like in FNAF 2, you'd sit in your office to kind of laugh as you waited your death. But here's the thing, I really don't like those awaiting death mechanics. Like in FNAF 2, he disables your flashlight. If you're not at 5am, you're not going to survive that run because Fox is going to kill you. So you kind of just sit there awaiting your death, and it kind of takes the scare out of the jump scare. It just ruins the whole horror atmosphere as a whole. I think Phantom BB fits a lot better because when he disables your power, it turns back on. So there's still a chance for you to finish that run. So, yeah, that's Wizard BB. Wizard Yendo was a character that never saw the light of day. Yendo was one of those characters that we really knew nothing about. He was just an endoskeleton that appeared in sister location, and I wanted to expand on that a little bit, maybe add a little bit more to him as a character. Just like with Withered BB, no model was ever done for him, nor was any programming. His mechanics were never finalized, like with um, Withered BB, which I knew which direction I wanted to go with him before he eventually got scrapped. He would have been a last minute addition to Night 6, and the first draft for his mechanic was that he'd appear at one of your three entrances and you use the heaters to get rid of him. But since you'd be using the cameras to watch Fredbear and Springtrap, I thought, okay, maybe that would be a little bit too difficult because you don't want to be watching for Yendo while you have the two Springlocks to worry about. And when you got to the 20 mode, you'd have everyone else to worry about as well, so he just felt like a nuisance more than a good addition. So then the second draft was that you'd hear him laugh, it'd be a deep, low, mechanical laugh because he's an endoskeleton. And then you turn on, I think it was the middle heater. But I had no way of telling the player, like, do the middle heater except with the tips in the game over screen, which were kind of randomly generated. And I didn't want the player to keep dying over and over and over until you get that tip and realize, oh, middle heater. Then I, it dawned on me that Mangle isn't in Night 6, so what will stop you from just leaving the heaters on? I thought maybe I'd add a mechanic to get rid of that, where if you left the heaters on for too long, Yendo would kill you anyway. Sort of like in FNAF 4, if you stay in one place for too long, you just get killed without really, really any reason. But I thought that'd be a little bit confusing to the player, like they just think, oh, I can leave the heater on. And then Yendo kills them, and they have to figure out, okay, what they do wrong. Then as a third draft for his mechanic, he wouldn't be in Night 6, he'd be in any night. He'd be a sort of Golden Freddy-like Easter egg, like in Final Fantasy Freddy's 1, where you'd see him standing behind your desk randomly, and if you don't flip up the camera, he'd jump scare you and then crash your game. Eventually I decided to just scrap him all together because he seemed like an unnecessary addition, and after I got rid of him in Night 6, he really had no point in being in the game. So yeah, that's Withered Yendo.